Welcome to a tutorial on Twine. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the enchant macro. So as we've been discussing changer macros, macros that produce some type of change within Harlow, we've looked at things like text style, text size, text color, and of course, chaining them or combining them together. We've also looked at the ability to give names to hooks and then use the change macro to use changer macros together. In fact, we also looked at an extended example of separating macros and content. So one approach we saw in much earlier videos, we could create variables and save all those changer values and apply them to hooks. But now we know we can also do the other way around. We can set up hooks and then apply macros later using the change macro to apply different changer values. What if we didn't need to name hooks at all? In fact, what if we didn't really need hooks at all? We can do the entire second thing, the alternative to using variables, with the enchant macro. In fact, the enchant macro is so important that the thing we've been doing that I have not purposely not named until this video is called enchantments, which is all based on the enchantment or the enchant macro performing enchantments. In fact, the change macro covered in a previous video is just a special form of enchant. So let's really look into what this means for us as we think through what we now know about Harlow. So previously, we could apply the change macro right here, but we needed to know a name. So as long as we had this name right here corresponding to this hook, we could change whatever was in it. So the change macro corresponding, working with the name or the tag for the corresponding hook. The enchant macro, again, the more generalized version of a change macro, doesn't need to know a hook name. It just needs to know what to go look for. It can use a hook name. We can use the enchant macro as if it was the chain macro and it works exactly the same. Or we can have it go look for words or phrases or other things that might exist within the content of a passage. Put another way, in this particular example we saw in a previous video, we would need to set up the hooks, set up the name, and then use the change macro. Instead, we can simply just write the text and then in some later part of the same passage, use the enchant macro to perform an enchantment such that it changes something that looks for using changer values. So let's look at this right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and build and play from this point. So this uses right here, the changer macro, something we've seen across a number of videos now. This, however, is an enchantment. This is using the enchant macro. And notice it changed just the word this, which is what I told it to search for. So if we want to just work with hooks, we can use the change macro. If we want to with, work with hooks and potentially words or phrases or other things, then we want the enchant macro. And again, all everything we are talking about is enchantments as a more general idea within Harlow. We can enchant how things appear using either the change macro or now the enchant macro. Let's look at a second example. So again, if we want, we can use enchant as if it was change. Change is very specific to working with hooks. Enchant works with anything. We can use named hooks. We can use words, phrases, anything that might be in the passage, we can then enchant or in other words, change in some way. So in the same way we saw in the previous example with the change macro, enchant works exactly the same. So if I go ahead and change the start from here to example two, we build, we'll see the same thing. This uses enchantment instead of change. So again, if we want to look just with hooks, work just with hooks, we can use the change macro. If we want to work with hooks or potentially other things, we want instead the enchant macro to create enchantment, the more generalized term for the same concept within Harlow. So let's take this one step more. Look at another example. So potentially we could do this right here, again, using the name of the thing, but this also points out something we need to pay attention to. As we start to use more name tags within Harlow, potentially with the change macro, or now with the enchant macro, we need to pay very close attention to case sensitivity. So in programming terms, case sensitivity describes if we're looking at lowercase, uppercase, or combinations of the two. So name tags in Harlow are case insensitive. That is example with a capital E, example with various capital E, capital A, capital P, and example with all lowercase are all considered the same thing. 
So this is very important as we think, start to think about name tags within Harlow, especially working with the change macro or the enchant macro. On the other hand, enchant macro, when working with words, that is not tags, it is case sensitive. That is, this with a capital T and this with a lowercase t are two different things. So let's go ahead and change from example three. So passage, start from here over to example three, build and then play. Notice this is right here, a use of a particular example and notice example, example, and example, one with capital E, one with very other capital letters, one with no capital letters, I apply the same thing. They are all the same tag. It is case insensitive. However, words, all lowercase is only changed. Words with a W that's capitalized was not changed. Words with the W with the O and the D capitalized was also not changed. So name tags working with the change or enchant macro are case insensitive. They don't care about capitalization, but working with the enchant macro, when we're not using tags, we need to pay attention to the case sensitivity, the uppercase or lowercase or combinations thereof. So an important, interesting rule we need to pay attention to as we think about enchantment in Harlem more generally. So to go over what I've talked about in this video, we've been using enchantment across a number of videos now. In fact, all changer macros produce some form of enchantment. They change things in some way. However, we've seen when we work with the change macro, we can find a particular hook and then apply some type of change. With the new enchant macro we've looked at in this video, we can do the same thing we were previously doing with the change macro, but we can also now target words and phrases and symbols in the same passage. So change for hooks, enchant for hooks and words and phrases, all of which are enchantments, the changing of some type of visual presentation within Harlow. Thanks for watching.